Hi, this is Brad with Copper Creek Cuts, a lawn care company in Northeast Florida. Today's video is an extended version of one I posted, I think back in December, that ended up being my most popular video ever. Uh, so we're gonna do some commentary here. I know some people like different kinds of videos. This is gonna have a little bit more how-to behind the scenes. So what you're seeing me do here is actually spray chlorinating liquid. That's not bleach, it's chlorinating liquid. The main difference is the strength of bleach that's in there. You can get that at pool supply stores. I wanna say they're about three bucks a gallon. One of the more common comments I got on this video was you should have used a service cleaner. I'm trying to right here, but you can see me squeezing the trigger and nothing's happening. Turns out these nozzles at the end were actually clogged. I guess I didn't blow all the water out from the last time they were used. So there was a little bit of debris in there that was preventing it from working. What that meant for me was that I had to end up just using the wand. But it, it worked out because I honestly think that makes a better video. There's something about seeing little tiny things, little tiny streaks done really, really fast that I don't know, there's something satisfying about it that you just don't get with a big 20 inch pressure cleaner or surface cleaner, I should say. You also saw, I for some reason started with the yellow tip, I don't know why, this red turbo nozzle is, is much quicker. Uh, the difference in the nozzles, they, they have to do with the degree of spray. So for instance, the yellow on my Echo PW4200 pressure washer is I wanna say like a 15 or a 20 degree nozzle that just sprays out like a fan kind of. That's not the highest pressure, but it is one of the higher pressures and it covers a little bit more area. If you stepped up to the red nozzle on my pressure washer, it would just be like a, a pencil tip stream. Very, very strong, but very, very narrow. So this red turbo nozzle you see me using is kind of a combination of those where it's a zero degree tip but it rotates in a like a 45 degree angle. So it cleans a lot wider area, uh, less work on you, less having to move everything around. And of course it's, it's higher pressure too. So it cleans a little bit better. That comes in handy when you're pushing dirt like this. When you pressure wash something that's real dirty, you'll have, find yourself, you have to keep pushing the dirt further and further back kind of a pain in the butt, but you know, the pressure washer can handle it. If you've got a lower grade pressure washer, that'll eat up a lot of your time pushing that dirt out of the way so that you can actually get to the concrete. Mentally, pressure washing is, it's weird. It's, it's something that uh, you've got to be in the right headspace to enjoy because it's just so monotonous and it just drags on. So I, I definitely recommend some type of Bluetooth hearing protection. You've got to use hearing protection with this stuff. If this job took four or five hours, I don't remember what it took, but if it took that long and I had no hearing protection, that's the kind of stuff that'll kill your ears over time and it doesn't take very long. So one way or the other, you got to have hearing protection. I recommend some kind of Bluetooth so that you can patch into music or a book or something on your phone that really, really helps the time go by. Otherwise, it's just, you know, if, if you're okay being in your own headspace for that long, more power to you. I know I, I don't like myself that much, so I don't want to, <laughs> I'm just teasing. I also try and track my progress by how many panels I have left in the driveway. How many, how many panels of concrete do I have left? Okay, only six left, only five left, only, I'm down to the last three, you know. All these little kind of coping mechanisms that I have to try and make the time seem like it's going faster. A lot of folks ask about how to price pressure washing. I always underbid, so I'm still learning. But what I've been doing is keeping track of how long everything takes me. So how long does it take me to set up once I get to the property? How long does it take me to spray off everything? How long does it take me to clean up and break down? And I time each of these things separately. Then what I do is I have a Microsoft Excel, or it's actually Google, I guess, Google Sheets, that I break all that stuff down. And I also use Yardbook to measure the square footage of concrete. So I can say that this job, for example, was 1,200 square feet of concrete. It took me, whatever, four and a half hours to clean. I had to spend 15 minutes setting up. I had to spend 
it's 12 minutes breaking down. And what happens is that the more you do that, the more confidently you can say, okay, well, if I've got a 1300 square foot pressure washing job, I can just plug those numbers into the sheets and it's gonna take me this much time. And if I wanna make this much money per hour, then I need to charge X, Y, Z. So I say that I keep underbidding because there's always things that pop up, right? So like on this job, this was one of the first times I used chlorinating liquid for the whole thing. So I didn't know how long that was gonna take. That was kind of a big time sink, you know, having to uh, fill up the tank, stop, spray, I'm empty again because I didn't know how quickly it was gonna go. So, you know, that, that took up a portion of time that I wasn't calibrating properly. That's not the right term for it, but. And then also my surface cleaner, you know, it stopped working on me. So then I had to switch to this. So for instance, I bid this job using that spreadsheet, but again, it was under because I had a bunch of stuff happen to me I wasn't planning on. So uh, you've got to do something so that you're not just completely guessing, but I still have not run into all the variables to where I can look at a job and I can say, well, I've got to consider this, 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 and I know that because all these things have happened to me in the past. You know, it's the same kind of thing when you're pricing a mowing job. When you first start out, you have no idea how much to charge for a yard, right? But after you do 10, 15, 20 yards in the same neighborhood, you know, okay, well, if there's nothing in the backyard and nothing in the front yard, it's going to take me 30 minutes. Uh, if you've got a pool or a trampoline, I'm gonna add five, ten dollars just for the pain of it. Uh, and you just know better. So it's, it's kind of the same thing with pressure washing. For me, I just don't do enough pressure washing to have gotten very good at the pricing yet. You know, it's something I only do one or two times a month. So it's not like mowing where every week I'm doing 20 or 30 or 40 or 50, you know, depending on the time of year, that deal. So we are here at the end. I'll let you enjoy these before and afters in the music. Thank you so much for listening to me. If you'd like to see some more videos towards the end, YouTube will show some that they think that you might like. As always, please consider subscribing so you don't miss more videos like this. And thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.